Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me on this presentation. This is a video empowerment series. And the title of this is Preventing Cancer with Nutrition. So before I get started, I just want to uh, briefly address perhaps one of the largest tragedies in our country today, and that is that people are convinced that drugs do the healing. People are convinced that their body is, is malfunctioning somehow, um, their body is, is not working right, and they need drugs in order to perform better or to actually heal. Um, I have experience as a paramedic. I've worked in the back of hospitals, um, in the back of ambulances. I've worked in hospital emergency rooms for over a year. And I can tell you firsthand that drugs are necessary for emergency situations. Um, at best, they can make the healing process more comfortable. But let's give credit to where credit's due, and that's to the body. The body is the res one responsible for doing the healing, and it's not the drugs. So mark your calendars. This is going to be um, 7 of 12, okay, on Sunday, September 24th. So it's a different day than our usual empowerment series. It's on a Sunday, and this is also in the afternoon. So this is going to go over details of prescription and prescription drugs and herbs. So we're going to look at pharmaceuticals and how they affect your body, and we'll look at herbs and how they affect your body. And this is going to be at the Sylvester Powell Community Center in Mission, Kansas. So lots of information in this. So I don't want to spend um, um, very much time talking about myself. My name is Gabe Roberts. I'm a chiropractor and a functional medicine provider. My wife and I um, are founders of Back to Nature Lifestyle Medicine. This is a world-class functional medicine clinic in Prairie Village, Kansas. And despite our credentials, we're always in a state of growth. We're the only best practitioner in Johnson County, which is a um, superior upper brain type of, of adjustment. Um, we have a concierge package that has helped many people with autoimmune, diabetes, thyroid problems, irritable bowel, a number of chronic pain and illnesses, um, digestive disorders, all sorts of different, all, all sorts of different conditions. Um, we've helped many people by striving to educate them on exactly what's going on with their health, what's going on with the healthcare system and what they need to do to take control of their own health. Um, I mentioned before, we're always in a state of growth, and I'm pleased to announce that Tiffany and I are actually working on our PhDs in clinical nutritional application. So some more upcoming events. Friday, September 8th is gonna be a ladies night. Um, this should be a little more casual. It's gonna have, there's gonna be some wine and some wellness tips. Tiffany is working really hard on getting you guys some fantastic information for this. You don't want to miss it. But again, it's going to be casual and relaxed and um, a lot of fun. Also, September, uh, Saturday, October 21st, is going to be our fall make and take. There's a $10 fee for the raw materials that you'll take. And what you're essentially going to do is combine essential oils for um, some therapeutic adjuncts to use in the wintertime. And again, this will be at our house on Saturday, October 21st. So I'd like to stay connected. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, Back to Nature Lifestyle Medicine, and like us, um, you will get feed daily on literature, on nutritional applications, on the importance of stress management, and even things like grounding and what happens to your brain when you practice gratitude. So I put daily posts up. I mentioned before that we're working on our PhD. And the more we learn, the more we want to make available to you. And this is a great way to um, keep in touch. So our location is in Prairie Village, Kansas, in the Corneth Executive Building on the southeast corner of 83rd and Somerset. So this workshop, this video reputation of a workshop will not change your life unless you're willing to make a change yourself. It's important to recognize why are you here? Why are you listening to this today? Um, there's no free food. I can't give you any coffee or beverage through the video. 
Um, more than likely you're here because you want to learn and you want to be educated on exactly what's going on and why your body won't heal. All your body knows how to do is heal. And sometimes we have to figure out and untangle and unwind what the circumstances are. So that's important to recognize. So I do want to briefly um, view our practice policies and our personal policies. There are no get healthy overnight schemes and we don't promise that. Your results are based on your efforts, your compliance, and having a realistic timeline. Having a timeline is very important. Sometimes people can have a realistic goal, but they have an unrealistic timeline. And if those two don't match up, they oftentimes will quit early or drop out. And as a result, um, they don't meet their goal. Most people who embark on any kind of journey fail, and there's very specific reasons why, and I'll go over one. So our core values, we don't treat the patient. So we don't treat diabetes. We don't treat irritable bowel. We don't treat autoimmune. What we do is we co-create health. Health is a very dynamic, um, constant state of change, and we have to um, address it as such. Most diseases start in the digestive tract. So what you eat and actually how you eat matter. You can't eat a nutritious meal and fool yourself that you're going to make the best out of it and absorb it if you're eating in a stressed out state. Your body has to have the correct signals in order to function properly. Another, another example is you're not going to fully heal and reach your 100% level of health if you have poor relationships with people, whether this is friends or family or even a spouse, it's going to limit you. Again, it comes down to giving your body the right signals. You must feel appreciation. You must feel purpose because that's what will fuel happiness. And happiness is the ultimate driver of health. What's the use of being around for 100 years if you're unhappy every day? And last, patient determines the outcome, not the practitioner. This is always the case with any kind of doctor you see, whether it's a dentist or a psychologist, uh, whether it's a functional medicine provider or a medical doctor, it's the patient that determines the outcome and a good practitioner will help you navigate the path to health. Nobody can create that path for you. That's your own path. But what we can do is help you remove any kind of obstacles that you didn't know were in the way. So your roadmap to success requires a careful assessment of your current situation. Um, I mentioned earlier that most people in Buck Orange, any kind of journey fail, and there's very specific reasons why. One of the biggest reasons is people don't have an end goal in mind. You must have an end goal when you start on your journey to health. And the end goal has to be very specific. Um, you can't get out of pain. It, it can't be something like that, or I want energy back. Um, or I want, you know, my thyroid to function correctly. Those are all pretty easy to do. Your end goal should be something that perhaps your illness is keeping you from doing. One of the questions that stumps the people the most is what would you do if you woke up in the morning and you absolutely felt amazing? What would you do with your life? What would you do with yourself? That's important to recognize because when you have an end goal, now we have something to strive and shoot for. And if you don't have an end goal, it's equivalent to asking for directions if you don't know where you want to go. And you just can't do that. You can't just ask a guy standing on the corner for directions if you have no idea where you want to go. The same applies with your health journey. So this is called Allegory of the Cave. This is out of uh, Plato. He's an ancient philosopher. This is out of his book called The Republic. And as you can see on this picture, there's on the bottom left corner, there are people shackled to a wall who stare at shadow figures displayed behind them. And these shadow figures are being held by props by puppet masters right on the other side of the wall. And then there's a fire, you know, kind of displaying the shadows. And there are some um, people that are climbing their way out of the cave. And as you can see, there's a, there's a person standing outside the cave. So these people are born slaves. The ones that are shackled to a wall are born slaves. They spend their whole life here. All they know and all they see 
and the only culture they're ever exposed to are the shadowy figures on the wall. All they ever hear are the whispers from the people behind the wall. They're convinced these shadows are real. The person standing outside the cave realizes the shadows are not real. Only when you're able to climb out of the cave and realize that you've been in a cave your whole life, there's sunlight, there's trees, there's an ocean, you know, there's wildlife. Only when you reach outside the cave can you look back into the cave and realize that those shadowy figures you watched your whole life are nothing more than shadow figures. Those are not real. Now imagine the irony it is. This is what it's like for Tiffany and I every single day at work to explain to people how important nutritional lifestyle is um, despite the mess that we're in with our healthcare system today. I encourage people to break their shackles and climb out of the cave. Um, imagine the irony it is to climb out of the cave and see the vastness of the ocean <clears throat> and then climb down back into the cave, make your way to these slaves that are shackled to the wall and try to explain to these people that these shadow figures are not real. These are merely displays from props that are from a fire behind them and there's much more outside the cave. Imagine what it's like trying to explain to these people who have only seen a shadow their whole life what an eclipse is or what the vastness of the ocean wildlife is or even what a, you know, a stampede of horse running out there in the field is like. You know? A majority of people are going to say, you know, these shadow figures are good enough for me and that's that. A small amount of people will want to actually break their shackles and see the reality for themselves. So I encourage you as we're going through this workshop to break your shackles and climb out of the cave. So my next question is, what are these shadowy figures anyway? So right here, as you can see, your, your uh, political spins, all your media, your Monsanto, um, American Medical Association, all these shadowy things that are keeping you in the dark. So as we get started, I briefly want to <clears throat> touch on something that's relevant to the summer, even though we're through the uh, August month now. I do want to talk about heat waves. In 1980, heat waves, about 1,200 people died. In 1995, Chicago lost 739 people in just a few days. In 2003, Europe's heat wave killed 35,000 people. Okay. Every year in the U.S., heat kills more people than floods, earthquakes, lightning, tornadoes, and hurricanes combined. This is kind of baffling to me because I remember as a kid, I could play all day long outside during the dog days of the summer. I'd ride my bike across town, have no problems, take a few slurps off a neighbor's garden hose, and be on my way again. Today people can't go anywhere without carrying a water bottle and they're, and they're quickly easy to see. Um, I, I watch people walk in front of my house all day long and nobody can go anywhere without carrying a gallon of water at their side. People have had their hydration absolutely destroyed, absolutely destroyed. And Chicago, the 1995 um, Chicago incident where people, 739 people lost their lives in just a few days. These people were all told to go on a no salt or low salt diet, as well as they were taking prescription diuretics. So diuretics will further flush out your salts and your minerals. If anyone's ever tasted their own blood, you can tell it's salty, you know? So we need salt. Our hydration has absolutely been destroyed. So proper hydration begins with the proper protocols. Coconut water is far more nourishing and hydrating to the cell than even water itself. Um, whenever people are sweating excessively, and you can tell the ones that have lost their salts and minerals because they, they can sweat in an air-conditioned room. Um, they're the ones that drink a lot and pee a lot, and they're always thirsty. 
Okay. They have lost their salts and their minerals. So a good way to replace that is through Celtic sea salt. That's the most pure and healthy salt available. It contains 84 elements from the sea, none of which are removed during harvesting. And when you take this many trace minerals, it, many things balance out, including your blood pressure. This will actually um, decrease the stress load of your kidneys. Contra, uh, contrary to popular belief, when people are drinking and peeing all day long, their kidneys are actually very stressed out to balance the sodium. You take a little Celtic salt, a pinch of it in your water, and you can quickly relieve the stress of your kidneys. So unknown to the public at large, many vitamins today are produced through a total chemical synthesis, a process whereby a complex organic compound is synthesized from simpler petro petrochemical derived precursors. What this is saying is 98% of your vitamins sold in the free market are, are synthetic. They're made from oil. They're made from oil. Real vitamins must come from food, I'm sorry, must come from plants or animals, period. We know nothing about food today. We know nothing about food. We can't even copy a blade of grass. And I'm just amazed at all these people that come in with their big bags of synthetic vitamins. Most of this, I'm going to give you a recipe for the shake that my wife and I take every day. And most of the nutrients in that have not even been discovered yet. So, like I said, you have to get your uh, vitamins from a reputable source. Um, we have patients that come in that have seen other doctors and they're loaded up with synthetic vitamins. So, you want to get with somebody trained specifically in nutrition to ensure that you're getting the real deal. Synthetic vitamins can actually increase the toxicity load of your body and you, and you don't want to do that. So, average medical doctor dies at 58. The average American lives to the age of 78, and the U.S. ranks 50th in the world for life, uh, life expectancy. So what do these numbers mean to you when you look at these? I mean, this should, this should kind of get your attention a little bit. This, no, these numbers indicate that our healthcare system is broken, completely broken. And I will, I will sound you guys a warning right now. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes with your healthcare system. People cannot afford to let their health go out of control. There's never been a time like this, and you cannot afford to, to depend on this system to give you your health back. You've got to learn how to, how to keep your emotions in check. You've got to learn how to properly deal with stress, and you've got to get the essential 91 essential nutrients every day, despite what everyone is telling you. You, there's many things involved in this. You've got to, you have to take control of your own health because the system obviously is failing. So anyone that has um, cancer and wants to look deeper into this, this is a fantastic website. Ralph Moss, PhD, cancerdecisions.org. Uh, it costs about $300 and he will give you a, um, customize report on your cancer specific to you, what treatments don't work, what treatments do work, and it's very respected. So anyone that's on this kind of journey, it would be very smart of you to at least investigate this before you make any decisions. I personally do not treat cancer in my office. Um, we've helped many people with cancer, but they're also getting treated by somebody that's licensed to treat cancer. We all have us in our little scopes of practice, and uh, we treat the body with nutrition, but you have to have somebody licensed to treat cancer in order to do that, in order to work with them. So I just do briefly want to visit a couple of um, nutritional deficiencies that are very important. Zinc, thiamine, and magnesium are the most common nutritional deficiencies we see in Americans today, the most common nutrient deficiencies out there. Zinc gets displaced by um, copper in your pipes, your water, you know, you're drinking water out of your copper pipes in your house. Copper displaces zinc, zinc loses. Iron-fortified foods, which are in your processed 
manufactured, technologically manipulated foods, you know, they're iron fortified and that displaces zinc. So zinc loses. Thymine, on the other hand, is your B complex. Um, a great way to know if you're deficient in thymine is if you are outside with a group of people and the person out there that's getting just eaten up by mosquitoes, they don't have any B vitamins. Okay. Their B vitamins are shot. Thymine provides a little bit of some anti-mosquito repellent naturally. And there are no B complexes in our vitamin in our foods today. Okay. There's no true B complexes in our food. It's, it's completely depleted. Thymine gets pushed out with all your carbs, your candy, your sugar, your sweets, um, booze, excess exercise. If you're exercising four or five days a week, you're going to be depleted in thymine. Okay. And magnesium gets pushed out by all the synthetic calcium in our food and the synthetic calcium that people take in record numbers. So if you're getting Costco calcium, getting calcium carbonate or calcium sterate, this is going to further deplete your magnesium levels. So zinc and thymine and chlorides. Okay, we talked about zinc and thymine. These two provide your hydrogen, your hydrogen proton, okay, your hydrogen ion that's charged. Chlorides, on the other hand, provide your chloride ion. You cannot get chlorides from table salt. You cannot get chlorides from table salt. You must get it from Celtic sea salt. So when you have your zinc and you have your thymine and you have your chlorides from Celtic sea salt, now you have the pieces to form hydrochloric acid. Folks, if you want to avoid cancer, if you want to avoid autoimmune problems, if you want to avoid um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, um, irritable bowel, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, colitis, and the list goes on and on and on. If you want to avoid these, you must keep hydrochloric acid very strong in your stomach. Nowadays, everyone's on antacids, Prilosec, and um, you name it, and that is detrimental to health. When, you're, when your gut goes south, your brain follows. Just remember that. So Dr. Raymond Healy of the Foundation for Alternative and Integrative Medicine in Spain says, after treating thousands of patients who are sick with cancer, I can confidently say that what we need to focus on is not the cancer. Our focus must be the provocators, the agents that are causing the body to get sick in the first place. After treating thousands of patients, change our focus. That's what he's saying, change our focus. Now, this is really important for the ladies. I want all the ladies to pay attention to this. This is a fairly recent study out of the Lancet. What they found was many screen detected invasive breast tumors spontaneously disappear when undiagnosed and untreated. There are no, there's no to research on what happens when these breast tumors are left alone. Nobody's left them alone. We're so quick to treat them and remove them and radiate them that nobody's left them alone. So the Swedish mammography screening program between 1986 and 1990 involving 650,000 women looked into this. And what they found during this time period, you know, four years, most of them disappeared. That's right. Most of them, breast tumors, disappeared. And that's the Lancet telling you this. This isn't some quack journal. This is a, a real journal. And this has really shocked the world. And they're hoping you don't catch on to this because there's quite an industry built up around this. Speaking of which, let's look into this industry. The dark side of pink. Zinca Pharmaceutical, one of the original founders of October's National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, is the company which manufactures the drug tamoxifen. This has been approved for use in 1977 and classified as a carcinogen by the World Health Organization. Zinca Pharmaceutical is also a subsidiary of Imperial Chemicals and they produce millions of pounds of vinyl chloride, an, in an ingredient directly linked to breast cancer. So in other words, when you see people with the pink ribbons, 
and the pink dresses and the pink fountains and they're dancing around, you know, to trying to raise awareness of breast cancer. Should they really be looking for a, the cause of breast cancer instead of awareness? So we need to be very careful about our wording and see what the real picture is. The same with the American Diabetic Association. I was endorsed by the American Diabetic Association at one time, and the mission statement for the ADA is to raise awareness of diabetes, not to find a cure, not to find the cause, to raise awareness. And if we're raising awareness, we're not really looking for a cure. Okay, if we found a cure, the American Diabetic Association would be, you know, no longer need to be around. So here's a 14 year study based off randomized controls trials. These are the considered the gold standard of medical evidence. And this is published 1990 to 2004. So your doctor should be well aware of this. Overall contribution in curative and adjunctive cytotoxic chemotherapy to a five year survival rate in adults was estimated, be, estimated to be 2.3 in Australia and 2.1 in the USA. They said the contribution of chemotherapy to cancer survivorship is no more than 3%. This makes chemotherapy 97% ineffective, right out of the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Not my words. 30 years of breast screening. Effective three decades of sc screening mammography on breast cancer incidents. Researchers estimate that among women younger than 40 years of age, breast cancer was overdiagnosed. Tumors that were detected on screen would have never led to clinical symptoms and 1.3 American, American women over the past 30 years. So this is important. And remember, folks, this is the literature I'm reading. Okay, I don't want anyone... I know how sometimes people get really uh, defensive and they want to stick up for stuff. So remember, this is right out of the literature. Radiation Oncology Department at UCLA Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center, this is July 1st, 2012, they stated radiation treatments make breast cancer 30 times more malignant. I didn't say that. Radiation Oncology at UCLA Johnson, cancer, Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center said the radiation kills half the cells treated. The surviving ones are resistant to treatment and they get tough. They're 30 times more likely to form tumors. And it says the radiation treatment regresses the total population of cancer cells. And this generates the false appearance that the treatment is actually working but actually increases the ratio of highly malignant to benign cells within that tumor, eventually leading to the treatment-induced death of the patient. Radiation oncology, that's right out of them. I didn't say this, that's right out of the, that's right out of the literature. You wanna be aware of things like this. Archives of internal medicine would not lie to us. CT scans are a major cause of breast cancer and they're supposed to detect, and women should avoid all just-in-case and routine screening. So I can tell you in practice, I've seen this very routine. We've seen CT scans for nosebleeds, for earaches, um, sinus infections. So you want to be aware of the radiation treatments you're getting every time you get scanned, and they'll scan anything today. If you have the insurance, and you'll hold still, they'll scan you. Viruses and cancer. So Professor, Professor Robert Sudi, Director of Clinical Research for Cancer Research UK, states that at least 25% of cancers are caused by viruses. I'd have to strongly disagree and say that percentage is much higher. We run a lot of viral panels on people and see a lot of chronic autoimmune Chronic illness when people are immune system is absolutely tanked because they have a cumulative effect of lots of viruses attacking their system. This is very common, and doctors don't tend to look for viruses. 
So before we go deeper into this and go into the wiring of what's actually going on, we need to have a basic understanding of some genetics. So here we see a human cell and we have about 60 to 70 trillion of these. And if we discovered one of these on a distant planet, it would be the greatest discovery of mankind, hands down. And we each have about 60 to 70 trillion of these. So as you can see this cell, there's lots going on in here. And there's also the center nucleus. Okay, and that's where we're gonna go deep into. Inside that nucleus, there's 23 chromosome pairs, and they're all made of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Chromosomes are made of coiled DNA. This DNA controls all the cell growth, cell division, and reproduction, as well as controlling production of all proteins. When you have a sick person, as a, as a sick patient in front of you, and they've got multiple organ failure, you're gonna to have to look at them at a cellular level if you wanna get anywhere. You can't look at organ systems, and you can't isolate things. You gotta look at the cells. That's where it all starts and that's where it goes wrong. So DNA is made of four nucleotides, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And it's the recipe card, sequence or order that determines the chemical information sent out to the nucleus. That's very important. It has to be very specific, just like a recipe. And this is kind of how it works. DNA genetic code dictates the amino acid. So here you have your DNA sequence. And this, it's like Morse code. It puts out specific letters that have to be in a specific order, just like a recipe. And this order determines the amino acid that's made. So here on this screen, you have alanine, arginine, aspartine, and so forth, so on and so forth. And these are specifically made by the genetic code. So it's very important to have this recipe in order, just like if you're going to have a cake. You have to have the ingredients to make a cake. So this is what it looks like on a, on a, on a larger scale. You can see the cell and the chromosomes that are removed from the cell. And when we unwind and uncoil that DNA, you see the genetic sequence. And the sequence determines the amino acids. These amino acids form proteins, okay? And that's right out of the Department of Energy because um, the Depart U.S. Department of Energy is very interested in genetics. So how do we injure chromosomes? Well, radiation, chemicals, nutritional deficiencies, and absence or imbalances of critical minerals. So here's how it works. Person number one is nutritionally sound. They have all their trace minerals and they're giving their body the right signals. They're exposed to a toxin and as a result, their recipe card stays unchanged. You can see it's A-A-A-T-T-T and the result is a normal protein. Person number two is not quite as nutritionally sound. They're missing some some critical trace minerals, they're exposed to a toxin and you have now a low or non-functioning protein. Now person number three is void of all the right nutrition. These are somebody that just does not take care of themselves, right? They don't watch what they eat. Their signaling is all wrong. They're constantly stressed out. They get exposed to a toxin and they have a poor substitute that steps in. So now they have a cytosine instead of an adenine, like person number one, or person number two has a thymine instead of an adenine. And we're looking at this middle initial here. That's where I'm getting that from. So person number three has a poor substitute, and it results in a low or non-functioning protein, which will be disease. So this is our genome. We've actually uh, correctly sequence the human genetics and what we found is we have 23 chromosome pairs here there's 22 plus the xy there so what kind of details are on these genetics on these specific chromosomes well we're going to take a close look at number 17 here and you can see a lot of different diseases just on this one specific gene many types of cancers many types of syndromes and diseases 
all that belong to number 17. So let's go into this a little further here. So this is an RNA codon wheel. This is where all your, your proteins are made, okay? This is where it's like a wheel that spins and it pushes out amino acids. This is where it all starts. You have to have your start codon and you have to have your stop codon. So one of these starts the wheel spinning and you have three other ones that stop it. And that's very, very, very important. You have to have these in place for these proteins to be made properly. So messenger RNA rolls to carry the chemical sequence out from the genes. So there's only one start codon and three stop codons for every protein made. Methionine is the starting codon. You must have methionine to start this. There's also three stop codons which stop it, stop the protein sequence being made. And if that stop codon is not, if it's not present, the protein continues to just grow and grow and proliferate into a genesis, which is, in other words, uncontrolled cell growth or cancer. So there are 64 trace minerals that code to 64 RNA codons. A deficiency in a related mineral can directly affect the codons, gene expression, and degenerate disease. This is how it works. So you look on the column on the left and you'll see the function, you'll see the codon, then the amino acid that correlates with it, and then the mineral. So start codon number one is AUG, and the amino acid that correlates with that is methionine. The mineral that's required for this to function is rubidium. You must have rubidium to start the sequence to build all your proteins in your body. Proteins, when you look at someone, you see skin and you see fingernails and you see hair. These are all proteins and they're made through this sequence. This is extremely important to have these trace minerals. Stop codon number one the mineral that it's used is hydrogen. And we best obtain that through water, okay? Through clean reverse osmosis drinking water, not tap water. Stop codon number two is the mineral used as sulfur. So that's your stop codon number two. It stops the protein sequence. Stop codon number three, the mineral is yttrium. This is a very rare um, trace mineral. And like I mentioned in, pre, in my mineral lecture, these trace minerals, these rare earth minerals have been known and proven to double life expectancy. That's why China controls 97% of the rare earth minerals out there. And this is what they do. They, they power cell phones and computers and electric cars and everything else, but they also provide critical functions inside of our body. And you can see right here, yttrium gives the stop codon number three the ability to stop that protein from being formed. And they've, they've actually proven that yttrium will double and triple the lifespan of mice. So getting this last stop codon to correctly stop when it's necessary is very important. And if your body is missing any of these minerals, it's going to grab calcium. It will grab Roundup. It'll grab heavy metals. It'll grab whatever it can, but they're going to be poor substitutes. And as a result, you get disease. Just walk around Walmart and look at the, pop the population. Those are people that are starving of minerals and they're all overweight because they eat continuously. There's nothing in the food. So minerals give this amino acids character and three-dimensional structure. It's just like a lock and key. That's exactly how it works. So like we mentioned before, rubidium is associated with the start codon AUG and the amino acid methionine to start 99% of all protein building. Methionine is heavily governed by selenium. Okay, rubidium and selenium are best obtained by consuming selenomethionine. This is a, uh, an, a supplement, a mineral supplement. So our good friend Joel Wallach, okay, actually sued the FDA eight times and he was successful every time. This is one particular case where he sued for millions of dollars and won to get these FDA approved claims to be said out loud about selenium and cancer. Selenium activates the P53 tumor suppressing gene. Ah, it turns a tumor suppressing gene on. That sounds very important. Selenium may reduce risks of certain cancers. Selenium may produce anti-carcinogenic effects in the body. 
These are FDA approved health claims. It costs millions of dollars to say those statements out loud. So the mineral selenium proves itself as a powerful anti-cancer medicine. One of the most effective naturally occurring weapons against cancer is like most other healthy things, something that we are not getting enough of. The mineral selenium has been shown in multiple studies to be an effective tool of warding off various types of cancer, including breast cancer, esophageal, stomach, prostate, liver, and bladder. <coughs> selenium and cancer. Graphic studies have shown that parts in the world where soil and foods that people eat are low in selenium, <clears throat> there's a significant increase in rates of colon, liver, lung, and prostate. People who supplement selenium had a 20% reduced chance of dying from any cause and a 50% reduced chance of dying from cancer. I mean, this is huge. Right out of the Journal of American Medical Association. Selenium's anti-cancer effects include increased antioxidant protection, regulation of cell proliferation, apoptosis. Apoptosis is basically uh, controlled cell death and cancer will bypass that mechanism and continue cell death continuing. So regulating that's very important. Selenium can actually suppress growth of blood vessels that supply nutrients to cancer and inhibit tumor cell invasion. It's selenomethionine strengthens the major cancer preventing genes. So we all have cancer, but our bodies are very resilient and will correct this before it becomes a problem. Okay. Selenomethionine strengthens those factors. Very heavily viral support. It gives a lot of viral support for Epstein-Barr, cytomegalovirus, and humo, human and immunodeficiency virus. It protects cells from free radical attack. And this is the real kicker of selenomethionine. It will multiply the effect of sulforaphanes on the body 13 times. So remember, stop codon number two is sulfur. Sulfur we get from cruciferous vegetables. So this supplement actually will multiply the effect of cruciferous vegetables on your body 13 times. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. So University of Texas, and this is the number one, the number one backed by literature, curcumin. Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center published a groundbreaking scientific review of their favorite anti-cancer nutrient, curcumin. One of those powerful and promising chemoprotective and anti-cancer nutrients. Curcumin exerts its biological activities through epigenetic modulation. Curcumin changes the regulation of DNA to help kill cancer and manage the downstream consequences. Genes are blueprints and those blueprints are activated and controlled by something else entirely, namely their environment. Curcumin is the beast. It is the secret. It does a lot of things to prevent cancer from growing. If they had one drug that could do what curcumin did, it would cost an absolute fortune. You know, think of like $30,000 a pill. So diet, toxic exposure, as well as thoughts and emotions can create more than 30,000 different variations of each blueprint. Curcumin has been found to inhibit proliferation of tumor cells, decrease inflammation, inhibit the transformation of normal cells to tumor cells, inhibit synthesis of a protein that's thought to be instrumental in tumor formation, helps your body destroy mutated cancer cells so they don't spread, and it will help prevent additional blood supply necessary for cell growth, all out of University of Texas MD. The number two, this is number two, most backed by literature, anti-cancer nutrient is vitamin D. Powerful neuroregular ster steroid, epigenetic influence. This epigenetic means outside the cell. Covers more than 2,000 genes in the body. There's more than 830 peer-reviewed journals showing vitamin D's effectiveness in preventing cancer. These all correlate and say that 77 out of 100 cancers would not exist with adequate levels. It's one of the best things you can do for yourself, 
especially in the spring and summer months, is get you a suntan. Get a suntan. I don't know how many times a day you have somebody that comes in and says, my doctor wants me to avoid the sun. My doctor wants me to use sunblock. That's terrible advice right out of the literature. Onions and garlic protect you from cancer. So a new studies analyze the odds of eating a, of a person developing cancer based on the frequency of ingesting these two foods. And this study was made in order to further clarify Chinese studies that demonstrate vegetables are powerful ways of fighting disease. The data network of Italian and Swiss case controlled studies showed that those with the highest intake of onions and garlic had the highest amount of protection from an assortment of different cancers, including esophageal, ovarian, colon, breast, and prostate. Here's something I want you to remember too. Breast cancer and prostate cancer are the same. Breast cancer in women is the same as prostate cancer in men. It's a very, very similar tissue. So the root cause of cancer is almost universally ignored by doctors. Winning the war against cancer begins with personal choices. Remember, it's the patient that determines the outcome every time. Normalize your vitamin D. Get proper sun exposure. Control the blood sugar. You want to keep your sugar down. I don't know how many studies are out there showing that cancer thrives on sugar. You want to get the right amount of fats. Consume the right omega-3s. You have to get some exercise. I don't mean join a gym and do CrossFit and all that. I mean get out and do daily walks. Get out and do daily walks near trees. That's a great idea. Walking is probably the best exercise there is, hands down. 85% diseases, 85 of diseases are directly linked to emotion, so you've got to keep your emotion in check. 85% of diseases. And this is uh, jealousy, anger, rage, remorse, inability to, to forgive. Those are the big ones that people that have those like to get cancer. So keep your emotions in check. Again, eat cruciferous vegetables, potent anti-cancer properties. You want to maintain ideal body weight, high quality sleep, reduced exposure to chemicals. This is pesticides, household cleaners, synthetic air fresheners, air pollution. A great way to get rid of some air pollution is go out and spend time at a park that has plenty of trees. Trees are fantastic air purifiers. You want to be aware of your cell phone usage and your wireless technology. This is our new beast. And we're starting to see a lot of people that come in that have EMS stress and are completely unaware of it. I'll be putting together a workshop that goes into detail about this in the future. You want to try to avoid frying foods. It's better to boil, poach, or steam them. And as I did in my stealth infection lecture, you want to get rid of candida. Candida has been documented since 1804 as a direct link to cancer. And we have an herbal protocol that will actually get rid of it in your body. And we're having some great results with people feeling much better and much more clear. And if you get rid of candida, cancer cells cannot survive in your body. So this is a routine shake that Tiffany and I take every day. This includes all the 91 essential nutrients that are needed. Your body has to have these essential nutrients every day. 60 of them are in the form of minerals. So two thirds of your essential nutrients are minerals and our soil is completely void. So the chance of you getting these from just eating a correct diet is absolutely zero. Okay, there's 60 amino acids, there's 16 vitamins, there's 12 amino acids, Okay, there's 16, there's six, there's 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two fatty acids. Okay, as well as in the, here in the bottom corner, you'll see my Vitanox. Okay, Vitanox is my supplier of curcumin, and I'll put a scoop or two of raw chocolate in this to help the taste, as well as raw chocolate provides uh, cannabinoids, so it's a fantastic mood elevator. This is what I take every day before I go to work. <clears throat> and your whey protein, you want to be aware of what you're taking because all the whey protein that's sold at the stores 
is completely destroyed. It's there for shelf life and it's not bioavailable. In other words, your body cannot use it. You want to make sure you know what you're taking. You're spending your money on it. You want to ensure you're getting the right stuff. Standard process is a completely unized, it's um, undenatured and it's completely bioavailable. So with that, I will say thank you for joining us today and we hope to talk to you soon. And for now, I say love yourself, love each other and make today the best day you can. Is that right? Is that right, Hank?